Well, hey there, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to be shading a frosted donut. I know I should not eat them, but I love them, and they love my waist. But I have been told that all the calories fall out of the center of a donut, so I'm going to go with that, and you're welcome to use that excuse as well if you'd like. I'm going to show you a little technique that I have used in the past. I don't always use it anymore because my brain works a little differently, but I used to always forget to leave highlight areas. And sometimes it's easier to think about it when you're like deliberately, I'm going to think about the highlights, I'm going to think about the highlights, put it in in a really light color. This is an E11 so that you can see it on camera, but if you're, you want to use a lighter color as long as you can see it and leave some of those highlight areas. And you're going to cover over all this color, but at least that's going to mark them for you. You can see there's just around some of the edges. I've just left some random highlights. With a, a donut frosting, it's going to be kitty wampus all over the place. It's not like all the highlights are going to be on one side for the most part. So then I'm going to put some dark shadows underneath each one of the jimmies because the cho chocolate frosting on it is going to be a dark chocolate frosting. And I'm going to need some dark color in here. But when it comes to shading the whole donut shape, I did a video on Facebook. I'll link you to the Facebook Live if you want to go see it, where I showed how you do a shape like this. So you take the whole shape itself, your highlight comes from one side, shadows go on the opposite side of each section. So you have two different shadow sections on a donut or a pair of glasses or anything shaped like this. But it's on the opposite side from where the sun comes. Whatever shape it is, that's still the rule. That's still how that shadows those shadows would fall. So on my donut, I'm going to put around that uh, kind of a C shape around the bottom and left side of the donut. And then the same thing around the top section, but it's the bottom of the frosting and that, that kind of bottom and left side of those sections. Then I'll just add a little bit underneath of the ears and the paws so the bunny looks like he's standing out in front. And then it gets easier from here. We can take a lighter marker. So I just step down two in the numbers to get to this one. And I'm going to just thicken up each one of the shadows just a little bit, make it a little easier transition when I get to my medium color. But you can see that it's there's just lots of going lots of shapes going on and lots of shadows going on here. Don't let your eyes get too confused. Remember your process. We're just adding to the shadows. And I'm going to add a little bit of the middle color now. This is an E37, so it's the base color of what my donut frosting will be. And here's where having that undercoat that when I left all those light colors Here's where that matters, because now I can go around all of this, but I remember there were some white spots, and I want to leave those. I don't want to leave all of them necessarily. You might decide to cut them down, and I'm going to do even more cutting down after I finish this, but I'm going to get around the whole donut leaving those spots, and I'm going to leave them for right now and show you a couple different ways that you can approach this. The donut on the left that I colored while I was sitting on my sofa that one has pink frosting. You would do this same process with pink frosting, just using pink and red colors to do that. So I'm using the same kind of coloring or same kind of shading for the cake part of the donut. This is, I'm picturing one of those yellow cake donuts. So I'm using a brown for the shadow and then a yellowish color for coloring over top of all that E11 that was there. So I give it that more warm color of the cake donut itself. Next up is going to be all of the little sprinkles, and those can be any color you want. Another option for doing a donut like this would be to color right through all the sprinkles. Just ignore the sprinkles, pretend they are not there, and then use something like stickles for each one of the sprinkles, because you can just go right over top of any of the coloring and save yourself a lot of headache, if you would like, by not even trying to color them in and just using some kind of a little sprinkle product or something in order to add them on top. Additionally, if you do color them all in by hand and then you want to do something with them, add some glossy accents to make them shine. Now I decided I wanted my sprinkles to shine more than the frosting. So what I've done is gone back into all of those highlights and knocked them back with first the E11. I just covered all the white. And then I even knocked back some of those. I took a darker brown and just you know, on a few few of those places, I'm leaving a little bit of a highlight, but not much because my white pen was coming. 
So you'll be able to see the difference between this donut that has white sprinkles highlighted with the, the white versus the one on the left where you see the shine of the frosting more. And the sprinkles don't have any dimension to them whatsoever. They're just a solid color. So it's two different ways that you can approach it. Now I'm also going to approach the bunny a little differently. I wanted to do a two color black and white bunny because I think they're adorable and they remind me of my little Vienna dog. And I'm going to make the ears black as well with brown in the middles of them. So he's a nice dark brown bunny with a pink nose because he's adorable and a little shading underneath of it and a little bit on the paws. There is a separate little face in the stamp set. So you could just use that stamp, cut it out, and glue it right over top if you would like the glasses on there. What I did for both of these was color the glasses and then cut them out and glue them on. For this guy, I had to use the same kind of black and white so that I could see those stripes going through because I'm picturing them clear glass. And then I'll paint the frames or paint the frames, color the frames with pink and use some of the same shading idea that I did before, putting some red on that bottom left. The other little bunny, notice the glasses are pink, so I didn't really have to worry either about putting bunny colors underneath of it because there's not much color to that bunny. It's a very light one. But on this one, I used some white pen, including kind of mushing it with my finger a little bit to make those glasses look like they have a bit of shine to them as well. Next up, fussy cutting. I know some people don't like to fussy cut, but I love to fussy cut. And these little scissors are so tiny and so sharp. I can get into the tiniest little areas. Even on these insides, I stabbed it with my scissors and then I could get the teeny, teeny, tiny nib of the scissors in there to do the fussy cutting. You could alternatively just color that area inside whatever is gonna match the background of the card. So it's easy enough to not have to do that, but this way I didn't have to worry about staying in the lines when I colored that donut because I knew I was gonna cut it out. And it would just be fussy cutting. And I do have a tip though on those who don't fussy cut well, like me. I don't fussy cut really carefully all the time because you know I'm always in much more of a hurry than I should be. So I take a marker and sometimes it'll be a dark gray marker because black usually is a little bit garish. And I color the edges of it kind of from behind. I don't want to accidentally make a stray black mark on the front of my picture. So if I do it from behind, I can color over those white edges that might not have been trimmed perfectly and make them look all nice and tidy. Next step in this is an action wobble. These are from Art Impressions. There's a couple other people I think that sell them too, but there's big ones and little ones. And if you hold one side, you can see the other side wobbles when you tap it. The little thing should jiggle around. If you hold the wobbly side and you try to jiggle it, you don't get much jiggle from the other side. So that the non-jiggly side is the one that you attach to the card so that your image jiggles around. Now, if you don't want much jiggle, you just want a little bit, you could reverse that. It doesn't matter which way you put it on. You'll just get more jiggle if you do it the way that I'm doing it. So I'm gonna glue it onto this piece. And notice there's two sizes that you can get. There's a big one and a little one. And depending on the size of the image, you might want to have both in your stash. Next up is pattern paper. I don't own much, but I did recently buy some rainbow pattern paper with spring coming. So I thought this would be kind of fun to use. And I picked out one sheet and trimmed it down. And the rainbow here has this really cool pink on the outside edges. Notice that color, that's cool. Versus the warm, which is kind of the color of the card base sitting over there on the right. And I didn't want that really cool pink on there, so I trimmed it off. And then I cut both of the card fronts out of that single piece that I trimmed. And then I got my card base. This is a nice warm pink, almost a salmon kind of color. And folded it in half using my score buddy, which is one of my favorite tools for keeping my card bases tidy. And then I never lose my phone folder, which is nice as well. And then I'm gonna use the corner chomper with the half inch corner on it to round the corners of the card. You can do quarter inch or half inch ones, depending on what size, what roundness you want. But I wanted the big chunky one. The bands of color, by the way, that, that white band across the card is those strips that I cut off from the left and right. So it's pink on the back. And I just glued them down onto the card front, made a little banner to hang down with the sentiment on it. And of course it's a donut sentiment that has to do with Easter 
So that's always a good thing, right? <laughs> my nieces are going to love these, I think. And my nieces are in their 20s. But, you know, you don't have to be a little kid in order to enjoy a card that wobbles and has donuts and bunnies with glasses on. So I'm going to send one of these to each one of them for Easter this year and just pretend that they're little kids again. And I think they're going to love them. And I think you might love them too. So supplies are all linked in the doobly-doo as well as over on the blog. And that's about it for me today. I will talk to you again very soon. I hope you go create something wonderful today. Make something beautiful and give it away. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.